we're joined with Sarah Fry and Elizabeth and Kat. Uh, we're talking about the No Manifesto new film that's just come out about the Manic Street Preachers. Um, so, what's it like? Are you a fan? Definitely a fan. Of the Manics, yes. Yeah. I love their music. I, th I think they're just a really terrific band. Yeah. I love the diversity of, of their albums, how each one sounds different from the yeah. others. And, you know, I love the fact that they don't, you know, they're not like a cliched rock and roll band. They've got yeah. kind of more going on than that. character, definitely. Yeah. And, and that was, you know, that was very interesting to me and very intriguing. Yeah. So. Which, which kind of band member inspired you the most, mm -hmm. would you say? Or was it like all of them well, had their different, you know? I, I've, I've, referred to, I've referred to the Mannix as a three-headed beast. Yeah. Um, although I suppose I should call them a four-headed beast. Yeah. <laughs> because, of course, there is Richie. Definitely. So you came up with the idea, was it 12 years ago? A uh, little over 12 little years ago. A little over 12, yeah. year, 12 years ago. Yeah. And <laughs> I was a, a lot younger time. then. <laughs> <laughs> and so did you speak to Kurt about this? Who did you speak to first regarding this? Well, the way that it came about was that um, I had become interested in the band um, in 2001. Yeah. I, I had an online friend, a British friend, recommend an album, you know, said, yeah. oh, you should listen to This Is My Truth, Tell Me Yours by the Manic Street Preachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I listened to it, and it wasn't necessarily my kind of music right away, no. but it still, it, it, it captured me. I mean, the first thing that attracted me was James Dean Bradfield's voice, and um, then I started listening to some of their other stuff, and I was, I was really interested in how each of their albums sounded different from yeah. the other. And so I kind of, you know, went on the internet like you do. Had a little and look, I, yeah. Yeah, had a little Definitely. look, and and I had actually heard the uh, the story of Richie Edwards on a different music forum the year before. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, it's it's the band with that guy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and um, of course that, you know, that's a very intriguing story, and and it's a, mis a, it's a mystery. A that's mystery for the ages, yes. Yeah. The thing is, you know, as I said, obviously. Richie was a fascinating character. You know, yeah. he was he was very colorful, outspoken, outrageous, you know, yeah. and his disappearance intriguing, a mystery for the ages. I mean, you you can't not have interest in that because it's such an unusual and compelling story. But as far as what inspired me, it really was a lot more the other members of the yeah. band because I was thinking, okay, here are these people, they've been close since they were children, yeah. you know, and here these, these guys had to deal with this, this tremendous loss, you know, this personal tragedy and this, this, the questions and the uncertainty and the grief and, and they had to deal with this very traumatic emotional thing and they had to do it in the public eye, you know, I mean, they That's had to- That's scary, they had, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they had to deal with how they felt about everything while at the same time they had to field questions from people who shoved microphones in their faces and everybody wanted a piece of that story and yeah. everybody wanted to assume, you know, what they were thinking and how they were feeling. And I just thought I was really struck by how much grace they handled themselves with. And so basically I was complaining to Kurt one day. I was saying, oh, it's so frustrating. You know, yeah. all these all these Mannix TV programs and stuff, all they talk about is Richie and, yeah. oh, is he alive or is he dead and what happened to him and stuff. And, and here's this great band and nobody's actually taking them seriously as musicians. No, not and I wish somebody would pay attention to the band yeah. as a band and not just as the sensational story. And he said, well, why don't you make a film about them? Definitely. And, uh, it was like, it was your dream, yes. and it's definitely coming alive now. Um, it's been um, rated 8 out of 10 in the NME Awards. Um, how do you feel about that? I'm ecstatic. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, I could say what happened to the other two points, but I wouldn't because, you know, the, the, the review was brilliant, and, yeah. you know, we've had some brilliant reviews, and the thing that I find most gratifying is that people seem to really get what I was trying to do with the project. I mean, each review that I read remarks on something that I was hoping yeah. would come across, but you never know whether you've succeeded or not until you get the film out to the audience. 